welcome to some of you. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue talking about ways to think about the different iTree tools that might be the most effective for you to consider for a variety of funding opportunities. Namely, we know that uh, you know within the last two weeks, a large amount of funding has been made available for urban and community forestry work, which you know we're hoping is is how you caught wind of these particular sessions. You know, we're hoping to speak to um, our urban and community forestry community with this. And uh, we we have today joining us, uh, and I see that Philip has hopped on. Uh, so from the start, I want to introduce Philip Rodbell. Uh, just to give us a little bit of context about this grant initiative and how that's connected to, you know, thinking about your work with iTree. Uh, Philip is actually with the Forest Service. He's with our national office, and he is the lead for urban um, forest sustainability uh, research uh, and management efforts um, across all of you know the state uh, you know, sorry <laughs> philip i'm sorry that I'm, I'm like flubbing your introduction but there are so many different ways to talk about the wide variety of work that philip does and it really serves to work as a catalyst and a liaison for the work that we're doing to bring um forest service science to users at all levels um through the iTree tools but he's graciously been able to join us um for these sessions and i want to give him a minute to say hello and to give a shout out again for some of those projects and the funding goals that they're bringing to the table thank you philip thanks krista appreciate it <laughs> yeah as she was as krista was saying you know we we are in an unprecedented moment with more than a billion dollars available through this federal notice of funding opportunity the nofo for urban and community forestry and these these funds are intended to focus on underserved communities that have highlighted, have been highlighted in the White House uh, Climate and Environmental Justice Screening Tool, this, what with the acronym CGEST. And um, you know the purpose of this kind of two-part webinar series is to focus on this funding opportunity to show viewers how to use iTree tools to provide and and monitor available data in support of project purposes, goals, and objectives in these underserved communities. Um, iTree tools uh, can help you identify tree canopy needs and opportunities in these communities and forecast the benefits of your project in powerful ways. Thanks to the iTree team, um, we have fully integrated CGEST uh, to help you focus data collection analysis on qualifying underserved communities and target assistance to these neighborhoods and census blocks. And after viewing the webinar, we'll still have questions. You can join us for the for the open office hour sessions next week, May 10th. Um, in the previous session, we introduced iTree landscape, iTree canopy, and iTree planting to help users quickly generate a narrative on the ecosystem and public health benefits of current canopy cover and new trees planted in underserved neighborhoods compared to others in the community. So setting context. So with these tools, um, you can benchmark your projects and prioritize impacts to make powerful case for funding your proposed projects and monitor growth over time. Now, this session, we'll make the case for funding iTree projects as part of a comprehensive proposal you might be putting together to serve these underserved communities. Uh, the collected data through iTree Eco will help you uh, to serve the whole community. By that, I mean identifying tree species, size, and condition that are unique to the area and both threats and opportunities for improvement uh, in those underserved communities in context with the whole. Uh, urban forestry uh, is much more than street trees. It crosses all ownerships and iTree Eco is here to try to characterize the whole forest. And basically this data um, can be used to benchmark tree diversity and forest resilience 
overall across all ownerships and help you to engage and work more effectively with residents to improve conditions on the ground. Uh, so with that, uh, uh, I hope you've caught my excitement and energy. There's uh, iTree Eco uh, is, is an important tool and it can be part of your proposal uh, for, for funding. You just need to focus the work on those communities that are eligible for funding. Uh, Krista, I'll send it back to you and thanks for the time. That's great. No, thank you so much, Philip. And, you know, thanks for you know, helping guide us through this opportunity to talk to people about how these things can go together, how iTree overall can give you a, a different, stronger perspective on, you know, your objectives and the goals for your urban canopy um, ideal, wherever it is that you are. And in addition to the ways that Philip was talking about ways that we can decide what it means to choose the location that, that's being considered uh, for these opportunities, we also want to, you know, narrow in a little bit more uh, too about what it means to think to think critically and for the longer term about how your management strategies can really um, enhance the overall impact. When we talk about iTree, if you're new to iTree in particular, it's talking about benefits, the tree, the benefits that trees provide. And it is a, it's a tool that's bringing this US Forest Service science to the user um, as a way to access what it means to think about those benefits. And we have a variety of tools that can help give you information that, you know, raw data. We can give you estimates looking towards the future. iTree can also talk to you in real terms with some of its tools about what it means to store carbon in certain amounts and what that can be equivalent to, right? Sometimes you're talking to people who might not speak tree. Um, and those can be valuable pieces of the picture, you know, the bigger picture. So again, we're we're thinking about those greenhouse gas emissions that trees help offset. We're thinking about stormwater mitigation. We're looking at air quality and the ways that trees can remove that for impacts on public health. We're thinking about energy, right? Trees produce shade. If you were able to join us when we looked at iTree Landscape, we talked for a minute about the urban heat island impact and how trees can be an effective strategy towards, you know, approaching those concerns. So we're acknowledging that while iTree can help you, specific tools can speak to specific aspects of your project at different times, but we wanted to go ahead and highlight the ways that, you know, iTree can be valuable for all of those. And we've chosen this, this particular two-prong approach um, as a way to start with the ones that might be the most valuable to think about. So again, we came forward a couple of days ago, we did a session and I can see that the recording of that session has been posted in case you missed it. And we took a tour of our, you know, essential online tools for looking at canopy assessment, for creating those benchmarks, for looking at what you have, prioritizing where that means your distribution of resources um, and you know your canopy resources, considering how all of those things affect your objectives. We looked at tools that can help you estimate the extent of those canopy resources um, and to help you think about projecting the impact of those resources over time with an eye towards maximizing those benefits through both your planting and your management choices. And today what we're going to do is take a look at something that can, you know, in some ways be pretty different, uh, but iTree Eco is really the driving force between um, the data that drives all of our other tools. It is about inventory management. It can also help you forecast those long-term impacts. And when you know we think about looking at eco, it's a different kind of tool, um, but it really is all service, right? This is for for iTree. This is the tool that's at the top of the food chain. 
Um, and today what Jason is going to do is give us a broad look at the kinds of analysis that ECO is capable of and what it's going to need from you, the information that it needs in order to do that. So, you know, again, ECO is a highly adaptable tool. It's, you know, usable for work in the field. You can import existing data in most cases. Um, it's going to offer an extensive array of reporting capacities. So, ECO is really the building block uh, for all of the other iTree tools. And I know that, you know, Jason touches on this in terms of the fact that we, it, you know, it, it's what drives all of, you know, the science behind all of our canopy assessment tools. So having said that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Jason. Um, again, feel free to utilize the chat today. Um, for any questions you might have. We'll try to get to as many of those as we can. Um, and remember that before we wrap up today, we'll talk to you about where to go for more information. As usual, you can start with our website and there are links to ways that you can learn more about everything we're talking about today, as well as looking at some information we've made available in the past. So uh, having said that, Jason, it's all you. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Krista. Yeah, and thanks, Philip, too. I think those were uh, great introductions. And I'm going to touch on a lot of things that uh, they both mentioned here uh, in a few minutes. Uh, as Philip said, we're going to focus on iTree Eco today. Um, and iTree Eco is really kind of a big tool with a lot of options. Uh, there's lots of different ways to use it. Um, so I'm going to really focus on places that I know. So I work in the city of Philadelphia, so I'll talk a little bit about how iTree Eco has been used there. And then I'll talk about a few different ways that maybe you can use it, uh, depending on the types of proposals or funding opportunities that you're looking at. Um, and then hopefully uh, we'll have a few minutes at the end for uh, Q&A. And if we, for some reason, don't have that time, do remember that we'll have those office hours next week where we are happy to answer any and all uh, questions when we get there. Um, so just by way to, to introduce iTree Eco, and um, I did a little bit of uh, a broader iTree introduction uh, to the last session. So if you want sort of that higher level iTree uh, all tools overview, you can check that out. But I'm just going to talk about iTree Eco today and sort of get us quickly into the tool. But really kind of at its core, the way that I see iTree Eco is that you take inventory data. So you've measured your trees, you've measured individual trees. Maybe you've done this by a sample, maybe you've done a complete census, and you're gonna input that into iTree Eco. And iTree Eco is gonna provide you with the uh, largest variety of ecosystem service has estimates that the iTree tools can provide. Um, it's really our flagship tool. It's where all of our science goes first. It was the uh, one of the first iTree tools. Um, so it's been around the longest. So we've added the most to it. It's got the most features and the most functionality. So there's really a lot of different ways to use it. We won't touch on all of those today, um, but hopefully we'll hit some that at least pique your interest uh, and give you maybe some ways to move forward uh, with the uh, funding opportunities. Um, so lots of ways to use these results. Education, advocacy, and management are just some of those um, that we'll touch on today. Um, and this is kind of, you know, the broad range of things that you can get out of iTree Code. This can be from uh, really specific structural things. So this is a diameter distribution by species. This is just cut and pasted from uh, the iTree Eco application. Um, and you can get a real quick idea of the structure of your urban forest, which is great information for strategic management going forward. But you can really dig into ecosystem services as well. So it runs the range from kind of this city level, looking at uh, what trees do I have, to really dialing into hourly estimates of the impact of trees on avoided runoff. So that's what this graph is at the bottom. Each one of these spikes is essentially a rainstorm and iTree Eco is estimating how those trees are keeping that stormwater coming from the rainfall out of the storm drain. So there's really kind of a wide range of what you can get out of iTree Eco. Um, and as Krista mentioned, iTree Eco feeds into all of our other tools. So we talked about some of our other tools uh, in the last session, uh, especially the easier to use tools, kind of the entry level tools, iTree Eco has a little bit more of a learning curve, but um, it is our flagship tool and it actually powers everything else. So uh, we have what we call the iTree Engine or API. Uh, this is essentially taking the science that's in iTree Eco, using it to estimate benefits of individual trees, and then it feeds into all of our online individual tree tools. So that'll be my tree, 
uh, iTree planting, which again we talked about two days ago in the previous session, and iTree design. They all feed off of this iTree engine, which is built on the iTree Eco platform. And then we have our canopy level tool. So essentially we take iTree Eco and we run it for every county in the country to come up with multipliers of the ecosystem services per unit area of tree cover. And that's what feeds into iTree Canopy and iTree Landscape, which were also covered last time. So this is just to give you an idea of sort of the scope of iTree Eco and how it supports all of our other tools. So a lot of times we get questions about how do my results in iTree planting compare to iTree Eco? Well, they're built on the same platform. We make some simplifying assumptions to make those easier to use online tools. Um, but iTree Eco is really the place to go if you want kind of the highest level, most detailed, most flexible results. But if you're just looking for easy to use results to put into uh, something like your funding proposal narrative, uh, maybe one of those other tools will make more sense. So just to talk a little bit about kind of how iTree Eco works functionally, um, you take field data. So you go out there and you actually measure trees. This can be anything from a single tree uh, to a bunch of trees. And there's actually some flexibility about what you have to measure on each tree. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. And you take that data and put that into iTree Eco. And that's really the heavy lift on your part is going to be getting that field data and getting it into iTree Eco. Within iTree Eco, we have city data. So we know things like the population and demographics of the city where you're working. Um, we know things like your latitude. So how long is your growing season? We know the area of your city. Uh, so we have all of that information in the background of iTree Eco for everywhere in the US. We also have pollution data. So we have a network of pollution monitors throughout the country, and we take all of that data, hourly pollution data, into iTree Eco. Similarly, we have a network of hundreds of weather stations uh, throughout the country, and we take all of that hourly data, things like wind speed and rainfall and how much sun is incoming, and we take that into iTree Eco as well. And all of those form what we call our location database, and all of that location data is in the background. So you don't really need to worry about it other than selecting where you're doing your project. We also have a database of over 8,000 species that feeds into iTree Eco, and this will include things like whether your trees that you're entering are uh, deciduous or evergreen, or um, how quickly they grow, or what is their maximum size, so that we can calculate all of the ecosystem services. So with all that data, again, all you have to provide is that yellow box of field data, all that other information uh, across a number of years is going on in the background of iTree Eco. And with that information, we can estimate the ecosystem services. Uh, so we estimate four core ecosystem services. That's what are your trees doing to store and sequester carbon? How are they impacting air quality? Uh, how are they impacting stormwater or hydrology? And what impact do they have on energy use of residents where you're working? Uh, iTree Eco can also estimate things like disservices. So we can estimate uh, are your trees generating volatile organic compounds? This is something that trees do. Uh, it can contribute to smog. So it's important to know, do I have trees that are doing this? Uh, do I need to manage them? Because smog is a problem where I work. And then you can get at some of that strategic management. And iTree Eco is also going to estimate the structure of your forest. So how many trees do you have and where are they? Uh, and finally, we're going to put a value on those. Most of the time, that's going to be a monetary value. And with all of these benefits, we can then forecast them over time within iTree Eco. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about forecasting today, but it's important to know that once you get your data in there, you can project it over time. And you can project things like, how will new trees impact my ecosystem services? How would a pest uh, in outbreak impact my ecosystem services? How would a hurricane impact my ecosystem services? Those are all things you can do with the forecast module in iTree Eco. So again, just to kind of summarize this framework of what you can get out of iTree Eco and how it works, if you've ever seen uh, me or pretty much anyone on the team do an iTree presentation, we talk about this kind of structure, function, value uh, framework of how iTree works. In Eco, specifically, when we talk about structure, we're talking about first those field measurements that you're going to input. We can summarize those for your area of interest. But then we can summarize things like leaf area. We know that's really what drives a lot of ecosystem services. So you can get that. Uh, over your whole area of interest, or you can break it out by different uh, neighborhoods within your city, maybe, or by different species. And we can summarize things like the conditions of your trees. So which species are doing well out on the landscape? They have good condition. Which ones are in poor condition? Um, those are things you can get just from the structure summaries in the iTree Eco. And again, things like species distributions. Uh, do I have a good variety of species, or do I have just a few species that 
may be more under threat if, say, there's a pest that impacts a specific species. You can look at all that stuff just with the structure summaries uh, in iTree eCarol. But from there, we take that structure and we estimate the function. So what are the trees doing out on the landscape? Um, so we're going to do things like how are they interacting with uh, air pollution to estimate air quality improvement? Are trees shading houses? You can actually measure how far a tree is from a residential structure and the direction, and iTree Eco will give you uh, the energy benefit. So uh, how is it impacting heating and cooling for that structure? Um, of course, we also do carbon storage and sequestration, and we do those hydrology effects. Uh, those are the four core ecosystem services that we have in all of our iTree tools. Um, but within iTree Eco, we actually do a bunch more. And just a few of those are things like uh, trees actually provide ultraviolet benefits ultraviolet radiation benefits. So the shade uh, will essentially limit the amount of UV radiation, which can impact things like skin cancer and human health, as well as uh, urban heat island effects. So you can get that out of iTree Eco. It also includes things like foodscape characteristics. Do you have trees out there that are providing food for people uh, and animals? Uh, is there uh, habitat suitability for bird species? Uh, again, those VOCs that I mentioned earlier. Are your leaves providing nutrients that you're, if you collect all your leaves, you're removing them from the system versus leaving them, uh, perhaps mulching them on lawns? We can estimate that in iTree Eco. So that's just sort of a partial list of the functions you get out of Eco, just to show you kind of the wide variety. And if you were uh, at our previous session, you saw that we had sort of a limited set that we use, but Eco has a much broader set of ecosystem services and functions. And finally, we put a value on this. Uh, lots of times that's just a monetary value. A monetary value is a great communication tool. Uh, you don't really need to talk about um, pounds of carbon and try and describe what those mean to people when you can say the monetary value of that carbon being taken out of the atmosphere. We also talk about things like equivalent values. Like if we take that much carbon out of the atmosphere, uh, how many uh, cars is that equivalent to taking off the road? We talk about hydrology benefits. Uh, how many swimming pools worth of water are we keeping out of the storm drain? Just so, again, we have different ways to communicate that information. Uh, iTree Eco, we also put a benefit on health outcomes. So if, if we're improving the air, we know how many people are there to breathe the cleaner air, we can estimate improved health outcomes. Um, so again, there's just a lot more variety of what you can get out of iTree Eco, um, including things like cost benefit analysis. So if you know, how much money you're putting into your tree program or into your city's tree program, and you know the ecosystem service monetary value, you can look at that return on investment. And that's easier to do in iTree Eco than any of the other uh, iTree tools. Um, and I just want to tie those kind of wide variety of things you can get out of iTree Eco to this specific funding opportunity that we're talking about. So this is just the uh, eligible activities from that forest service funding opportunity. And these are similar to uh, eligible activities that you can have uh, in other funding opportunities. So I think this is kind of a, a little bit universal in some ways. Um, but there are things like advance the use of tree and forest inventories, monitoring and assessment tools in priority areas. Well, this is exactly what iTree Eco is, right? It's an inventory monitoring and assessment tool. So you can use that in the priority areas identified as Philip mentioned by that CGES tool. Um, using iTree Eco. So that's kind of, you know, right the sweet spot where iTree Eco works. But once you have that data, you can do things like encourage long-term urban planning, assessment, and management. So once you know what you have, you can start to plan for a longer term, especially when you get down to information about what are my individual species across the city? What is my species diversity? What uh, percentage of my population is maybe at risk to a certain pest? You can start to do more of that long-term strategic planning. Um, you can encourage proactive and systematic maintenance and monitoring. Again, you need to have some assessment of what you have first before you can start uh, deciding how much of your tree resources at risk of things like forest pests or disease or climate impacts. And iTree Eco can be a great tool in part of your proposal to get you that information so you can do more of that uh, systematic maintenance and monitoring. And we have things like aid in planning and goal setting and skill sharing with per with other professionals such as urban planners, engineers, and public health officials. And with the information iTree Eco, between the monetary values and the public and the health outcomes, you can start to talk to those other allied professions. So it's got a lot of great information to help do that planning and goal setting that ties into all sorts of uh, other fields as well. Um, and finally, you know, if you really dig into this whole list, 
in just about every one of these opportunities, in order to really make the most of this opportunity, you need some baseline data. You need some information so that you can strategically tackle uh, these eligible, eligible activities to really make the most of the work you're trying to do. And as Philip mentioned, it's really important to point out that these activities are 100% fundable if they fall in these climate and economic justice focused communities. And we're going to look at what some of those are, but there's that CGES tool. Um, and if Jay hasn't put a link to it in the chat already, I'm sure she will any minute now. Um, but it allows you to see exactly where the communities are that you can do these eligible activities. So keep that in mind as I go through and talk about uh, kind of the larger uses of iTree Eco and how you could really focus on these locations. So I'm going to start with the Philly story. Uh, I mentioned iTree Eco has so much flexibility that uh, how you use it in your community is going to be different from how it's been used in Philadelphia and how it's used anywhere else. It's really going to be based on your local knowledge, and this is the spot where I have the most local knowledge. So uh, I'll just sort of highlight this. Um, and I'm going to start with Philly did an iTree Eco project back in 2012. Um, it was finally published in 2016, but uh, what this was, it was a citywide project. So they did circular 10th acre plots, 200 of them spread throughout the entire city of Philadelphia. You measure all the trees on each plot and you put it into iTree Eco. And the US Forest Service uses this to generate a citywide iTree Eco report. And this gives you some real standard uh, iTree outputs, some ecosystem service outputs. So we have on the right here, we have our executive summary. It mentions how many trees are in the city. It mentions things like uh, some of the ecosystem services that I talked about, uh, rainfall interception, pollution removal, car carbon storage, um, all those things. Those are kind of the high level, most common uh, things that you get out of an iTree Eco project, kind of the citywide summary, what do we have? Um, and we have lots of structure estimates too. We can look at things like which are our top species by leaf area. You know, the leaf area is really what uh, provides a lot of the benefits, especially when we talk about um, things like air temperature reduction, uh, carbon storage and sequestration, uh, rainfall interception, uh, air pollution removal. All of those things are really driven by leaf surface area. So, you know, you might see things like this uh, sycamore species, our London Plains. They're about one and a half percent of the trees in Philadelphia, if we're just counting numbers of trees, uh, but they provide almost nine percent of the leaf area. So they're really doing a lot of work, uh, number of trees uh, for the benefits they provide. So you can get some really nice summaries of what your city looks like and where the benefits are coming from. But we can actually do a lot more once we have all the data that's in an iTree Eco project. So we can stratify our projects. So once we've got all those plots measured, we can then say, well, how many of my plots fell in something like parkland versus the larger city? And we did this in the case of Philadelphia. And what we found was that about 9% of the city is parkland by area. But if we just look at the trees on those, the plots that fell on those parklands, they're providing about 40% of the carbon storage. So that's about, um, you know, that's a really good return on investment in Philadelphia. These are actually what they call in a lot of cases their watershed parks. So these are essentially natural forests uh, within the city. And those forests are really doing a lot of work, at least as far as carbon storage and sequestration goes. So with this, you can get a whole lot of information to support managing those forests in those parks, making sure that they're uh, safe from pests and disease. We may not be able to plant a lot of trees in those parks, but we can make sure that we don't have any uh, problems with development encroaching on the park, so we lose some of those ecosystem services that we know are really important to the city. But just by mapping these out as well, we can see that there are huge swash, swaths of the city that don't have access to these ecosystem services. So again, this is a nice way to use stratification, kind of dividing up your city once you have those plots collected uh, to see how different areas of the city are receiving the ecosystem services that trees provide. We can also uh, divide our project up um, just based on the species that we have in it. So we can just look at, in this case, the city took this project and 2012 was right around the time that the Emerald Ash Borer was reaching Philadelphia. And they said, well, how many ash trees do we have in the city? Uh, and it turns out it was one of the most common trees in the city, not necessarily one of the largest trees in the city uh, by size, but uh, it did provide, it was about 7% of the total number of trees in all of Philadelphia. And the Parks Department said, well, this is a ton of trees. We can see that there's a whole lot of ecosystem services at stake. 
we need to decide which trees we're going to work to keep up, which trees we're going to take down, and which trees, you know, maybe in these natural areas that we're going to allow to fall down. So they actually use this information to get funding so that they could be proactive in the management plan. So it's again one of those things where once you have all this data, you really do a lot of things with it um, uh, as far as strategic management in your forest. And just to kind of drive that point home, uh, so this project was about 12 years ago, just this this year, about a month and a half ago. I think Chris and I both attended the rollout of the Philly tree plan. So this is a, a tree plan that they uh, had in the works for a long time. The city didn't have a comprehensive tree plan before, um, but they used data like the data collected for that iTree Eco project to really support the development of this plan. They also talked to a lot of people who lived in the city. So they combined this tree level data with data about the people who live there. Um, and that can be one of the real strengths of an iTree project. So within this plan, they really highlight the benefits the trees provide, things like 400 premature deaths avoided. So that's directly associated with that air pollution removal, uh, things like that $20 million per year in combined environmental benefits. All of this is really driving that Philly tree plan. Um, you know, so they pull out some of these, some of this information and what they ultimately do is they take that information, they say, well, we want, we have want to set some goals for increasing canopy across our city. Citywide, they're trying to get uh, up to 30%, but they wanted to focus on things like residential yards or campuses and schools. And using the data from iTree, what they said was, well, we're going to increase our canopy, but how many trees is it going to take us to get there? Um, so from the iTree Eco project, they were able to say, what's essentially the average uh, crown diameter, how much cover does a single tree provide, and how many of those would I need to reach these goals in each one of these areas? Uh, and then they actually put a cost on it. Of course, they the city does a lot of this work, so they know how much it costs them to put in trees. Uh, if they're doing street trees, you know, they have to do a curb cut. Uh, they have to buy the tree, typically larger trees, and get them in the ground. Residential trees, they typically do a giveaway, so those are a lot cheaper. Um, but what they did was they found that it's going to cost them almost a quarter of a billion dollars if they want to reach these goals on all these properties. Uh, and even for a relatively large city like Philadelphia, that's uh, just a, a way too much money for them to make happen. I mean, even if we talk about this uh, $1.5 billion uh, amount of money available for urban and community trees, you know, you would talk about six cities like Philadelphia being able to reach their goals. So um, from there, what they can do with an iTree Eco project is they can really zoom in to where it's most impactful. and. Uh, this was actually before the current funding notice, so they didn't uh, have access to that CGES tool, but they did a similar uh, uh, analysis to pull out where their priority areas were. So they focused on just these areas. How can we get the canopy in these areas uh, up to where we want it to be to make it a much more manageable approach uh, to providing the benefits of trees where they're needed most in their city? Um, so this is the exact type of thing that you could fit into a proposal that lines up with the goals of the US Forest Service for this current funding opportunity. So if we look like uh, at somewhere here, we have this Southwest Philadelphia area. And instead of now looking at being able to provide, um, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars worth of trees, uh, now we have just 750 total acres that we're trying to increase uh, our tree canopy cover. And this is telling us to reach that 30% benchmark, each one of their little, little trees here uh, is about 2,500 trees. Uh, so we're talking about something like 17,000 trees. So it's a much more manageable number, but it's going to have real impacts for the people who work and live in those areas. So this is the type of thing that an iTree Eco project can really help you drill down to making those realistic goals. How many trees am I really going to need to reach this canopy goal? Rather than just setting a goal or doing a million tree planting project, you can say, I need exactly these many trees to reach this goal for these people. Um, so you can really put that in your narrative, in your project, uh, that you're really targeting uh, the benefits to the people who need them most. So, you know, just to kind of drive that point home, I went ahead and I took that iTree Eco project uh, from, you know, a few years ago. And these light gray areas here, those are the climate and economic justice areas identified by that by that screening tool within the city of Philadelphia. So I just did an analysis of the plots that fell in those areas. Those are the green dots versus the ones that are in reds that fell outside. And you know, right away we can see that we've got a whole lot more trees. About 88% of the city's trees are in those non 
uh, CEJ non climate and economic justice areas versus 12% uh, where we think we really want them for this funding proposal. If we look at something like trees per acre, we have about four times more trees per acre in those non CEJ areas. So we're going to need about 65 trees per acre just to uh, sort of get it up to the level of the rest of the city. And with a nitro eco project, you can go further. What about carbon? Well, it turns out that carbon is even more extensive. Uh, difference between the two. In CEJ areas, we're only storing about 4% of the city's carbon on those areas. And that's essentially because we have relatively smaller trees there than we do in the non-CEJ areas. So again, we can start to talk about strategic management. How do we really dive in and get uh, larger trees on those areas? And we can do the same thing with air pollution removal. Uh, energy is a little bit of a different story. Energy, actually 62% of our energy benefits are in those climate and economic justice areas. So that's a little bit of a success story, but really what it's showing is that we've got much denser housing there. So if you have a tree there, it's much more likely to provide environment or uh, energy benefits, and it's likely to provide them to multiple homes as well. So, um, you know, it just, again, it makes the case why trees are really important in those areas. And within Eco, we can go even further. Uh, if we wanna look at something like species diversity, those non-CEJ areas, have three times the species richness. So they just have more species. Uh, so they're going to be more resilient if we do have pests uh, come into the city. Um, they also have about three and a half times the leaf surface area. So they're just getting more benefits. Uh, trees decrease UV radiation by about 45% in that non CEJ area versus the areas we're trying to target. They're only decreasing UV radiation by 16%. So again, we can get at really targeted results to help in our strategic management. And we can look at things like uh, exactly what species we have. So in this case, in those CEJ areas, our five most important species are box elder, uh, tree of heaven, an invasive species, red maple, uh, arborvitae, a smallish shrub, and mulberry, another uh, potentially non-native species. But just box elder, tree of heaven, and mulberry are all species that are typically not looked at uh, very fondly. Oftentimes, they're going to be growing along a back alley. So we can look at something like the quality of the forest that we're providing in these areas as well. So there's tons and tons of information that you can get out of an iTree Eco project uh, along those lines. Um, but you know that's a really big project. That to do that citywide project, you're talking like fifty to eighty thousand dollars a summer of data collection, and that's something you can do in large cities like Philadelphia. But there's lots of different ways to do iTree Eco. So I just want to highlight a few more of those uh, kind of the simpler ways. If you're looking for kind of lower hanging fruit for ways you might put them in one of your projects. So um, before I jump into that, just know that if we're going to keep iTree Eco easy, it's actually really flexible. So the data you collect, you can collect just species and diameter for a single tree, and you're going to get ecosystem services. If you have a, uh, the time and resources to collect more data, you can get more precise estimates. But this is totally flexible within the scope of your project. Um, and we tell you exactly how that field data ties into results. So if you haven't seen it before, this understanding iTree document uh, is a great summary of those of how uh, all the methods behind iTree Eco. But I really like this table from page 22. It shows you how what you measure in the field ties into individual ecosystem services. So if we want to do things like we don't have the time to measure crown light exposure, well, that's going to impact the accuracy of our carbon estimates. Um, and you can understand that really quickly from a table like this. Sometimes that matters for your project and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and lastly, a really important thing to consider, I sort of mentioned this with the Philly project, they did a citywide sample. So a sample you're going out and putting random plots uh, everywhere across your area of interest. Lots of times these are gonna be bigger areas, cities, counties, watersheds, but really you can do plots anywhere where it's impractical to measure every single tree. Uh, so it's just doing a sample because it's uh, impractical to measure everything that you're interested in. So um, you can do these in just a CGEST area or just a neighborhood or just a block if it's impossible for you to go out and measure every tree. Um, but if you want to keep this easy, a complete inventory is a little bit more straightforward. You're just measuring every tree within an area of interest. Um, so you can do that really anywhere you want. You can even do it with existing data. So if you already have tree data and you have at least species and diameter, you can import that into iTree Eco in about an hour um, if you've never done it before. And we've got videos on the website to show you how to do that. So just keep the, the idea that those two things are different in your mind as I talk about these next few examples. 
Uh, so first thing, just to show you how easy iTree Eco can be and to uh, sort of break up my slideshow here, we can go ahead and actually do some iTree Eco data entry. So um, if you're following along, you can take your phone and you can scan that QR code and we can all enter some iTree Eco data together here. Uh, and Jay, if you want to put that in the chat, you can. So this will work on any mobile device. Uh, and if you have this link, you can also use it in a web browser. So if you're watching me on your computer, you can open your web browser um, and put this link in there. And we'll just go through uh, an example of data entry together. Uh, so if you scan that QR code, what it's going to do is it's going to open uh, your web browser um, and you can enter data to an iTree Eco project directly through your web browser. So uh, I'll give everybody just a second to catch up with me here. Um, and I've taken my web browser and I've kind of resized it here to make it look somewhat like a cell phone, uh, cell phone size. That's kind of how we would typically enter this data. Um, so if you're on this page and if you want to follow along with me, uh, please do. Uh, but for surveyor, just wants to know who I am. So I'm just going to enter my initials real quick and log in. And then I'm going to add my trees. So I'm going to pick a tree uh, near my office in Philadelphia. And when you go to add your trees, just hit the plus button up here. Don't use the uh, back and forward buttons in your browser. You might uh, lose data that way. Just use the kind of navigation buttons inside the window here. So we'll add a tree. And we have, just have to fill in each one of these categories here for this tree. So general info, I'll click there. Uh, user tree ID, I'm going to leave this as this is uh, my tree. I've vendored a couple of trees before, so I'm just going to call this JH tree three. And it wants a species. Uh, I'm going to pick a little uh, park near my office where I often go to eat lunch, uh, a tree that I like. You can pick any tree that you like um, or are familiar with. Um, and this is a uh, golden rain tree. And once you start typing, it'll narrow down. You can switch between common name and scientific name. And then just click or tap on the species once it shows up there. Uh, for stratum here, just pick wherever you are in the country, uh, sort of whatever quadrant, northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest. Um, if I wanted to break this project out and kind of summarize uh, by different areas of the country, I could using that strata. Once you have that information, we'll leave the comments and photo blank for now. Uh, we'll just hit save. And we'll just move down to the next one. So map coordinates with this mobile data collector, you can get the location of your tree. Um, so it'll take a second to load. Here, uh, if you click on this little bullseye button here, it'll zoom to your actual location, or you can type in an address. I'm gonna go with my office in Philly, uh, which is 100 North 20th Street. Uh, and I don't know the exact address of this park here, but it's this little uh, Cox Park here, uh, which is about two blocks from my office. And this golden rain tree is right on the corner here. Uh, so you can zoom and pan the map. I'm just grabbing it and panning around. You have the plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out. Once you get to your three, to your tree, you can just tap or click on it, and it's collected my coordinates up here. And we'll scroll down. Uh, and it looks like everything is good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the forward arrow here. And now I save my map coordinates. So I click on details. Uh, not many details to enter here, just our crown condition. That tree is in pretty good condition. This is essentially uh, how much dieback does it have. Uh, I think that tree probably has somewhere around 10% dieback. So I'm going to say it's in this 85 to 90% condition. And go ahead and hit save. And lastly, it wants to know stems, because again, our minimum requirements for eco are species and DBH. So I'll go ahead and hit the plus button here. Uh, the diameter of that tree, uh, it's about 18 inches. Uh, so you can enter the diameter for your tree. Uh, you can actually switch this in the settings. If you don't have a way to measure diameter, you can measure the circumference and iTree Eco will do the conversion. And now we've entered all the data for our tree. So I just hit save at that last stage. Uh, and you can see our, our tree is saved here. If I wanted to enter another stem, I could hit the plus button, but we just have one stem. So we'll go ahead and hit back here. And we've got our, we've entered all our categories. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Uh, and at this point we could enter another tree. Uh, since we've got limited time here, we'll just go ahead and submit this tree. So if I hit the gear wheel here, these options, 
Uh, one of them down here is submit data. So if I click on submit data, uh, it says I've got one tree here. That sounds about right. So I'll go ahead and hit submit. And now my data has been sent from my mobile device, or in this case, my computer here to the servers in Davy. And I've got an iTree Eco project uh, that I created for uh, this example. Uh, so this is my iTree Eco project. I've got a few trees in there already, but you can see I've got this submit to mobile and retrieve from mobile. So if I click on retrieve from mobile, I've got a password that I need to enter. That's just so no one else can download my data. And I'll hit show list. So this is anyone who's entered data. Uh, so if you were following along, your data is in here. Um, if you are uh, not quite as quick as I went there, um, you can keep doing it. Uh, your tree will show up here later. But I can then go ahead and retrieve all of these trees uh, into my project. And real quickly, you know, without if you've never used Eco before, you didn't have to have any real expertise. You could get your data into this iTree Eco project. Um, so I'll go ahead and retrieve that data. So essentially, it's going to pull it down from our servers in Kent into my iTree Eco project. It tells me it imported nine trees. Uh, and at that point, I can keep collecting data. If all my field data collectors can collect their data. If I was working with a community and wanted them to submit trees, I could just share this link just like I did with you. Uh, and we could have all sorts of folks collecting data for an iTree Eco project. So even though it seems like a big sort of scary thing, you can sort of simplify it down so that anyone can enter iTree Eco data. Uh, and you know, kind of one of the cool things that I think is you can actually map this data since we collected the coordinates of those trees. Uh, iTree Eco will save this as a KML file. Um, and I'll just save it to my uh, desktop here. And just to give me one second and I'll pop that open just so you can sort of see real quickly how we can do an iTree Eco project, collect a whole bunch of information. And, you know, maybe we weren't concerned about ecosystem services, but we were all working on a project about the trees, where we live and work, uh, and, you know, getting to see uh, the trees um, that we care about. So we can see that. Uh, we had somebody who entered a tree. Might be hard to see, but there's these little uh, pins here. We had somebody enter a tree in Puerto Rico. We had somebody uh, down in Louisiana, a few of us in Pennsylvania, um, uh, up in Michigan, uh, down in Mexico, out in Seattle. So real quickly, we can collect data, all sorts of people in all sorts of places about the trees uh, that they care about. So this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with kind of that real strategic management, but it's a great uh, engagement tool. Uh, so hopefully that kind of uh, diversion from me talking in slides uh, showed you one way that you might be able to use iTree Eco. But this is a really great way to go if you want to do engagement or citizen science. If you want to talk about monitoring, you can share that with anyone you want. If they've put trees in the ground and you want people to go back after two months or four months or six months to see how those trees are doing, you can do it with iTree Eco. Uh, you can collect that data and you can focus on just those uh, climate and economic disadvantaged communities uh, that are in this funding opportunity specifically. But it's a really nice way to connect people with their trees. Um, and even in kind of the, the harder projects where you do a plot based project, we have a really nice example from the city of Cambridge in England where during the pandemic they were going to do a plot based project, um, but the pandemic shut all that down. So they actually designed a way to send out these to every property owner that had a plot on their property so they could collect the data. So it was essentially a citizen pr science project where everyone was providing their own uh, data into the iTree Eco platform. Um, example two, uh, so again, to try and get away from these big citywide projects, you can do small targeted projects. So this is an example from uh, a friend of ours uh, in a little suburb uh, northwest of Philadelphia, Rita Stevens. She's a volunteer on her local tree board. She wanted to get started with iTree Eco, and she just had time to measure 95 trees in the neighborhood around her own home. Um, so this is a really, you know, kind of small project. She was able to do this in a couple afternoons, a couple uh, uh, weekend days, um, but she got a lot of really useful information. So this all feeds into the city's um, plan for their trees for the township of Abington Township. Um, so she pulled out things like what is a diversity, even in this small area. Uh, she was able to see the tree diversity and then make recommendations for the larger city about how diversity helps protect the benefits that the trees provide. And really, she was able to come home with this kind of take home message that what they should do to maximize tree benefits based on just a small subset of trees 
in and around her home um, uh, to maximize the benefits for that whole city. So, uh, you know, just with a really small project, if you want to put together something for like the narrative of your proposal, you can collect that with just kind of the small pilot project in a single neighborhood. If you're doing it for this specific funding proposal, you can focus on a CGES neighborhood just to show uh, the trees there. Or maybe you want to compare a CGES neighborhood to one across the street that's not in there, just so you can show the differences and really drive home why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you know, just another example, we can do projects on campuses. So this is a project that was on the University of Pennsylvania campus. Uh, you can see there are some London plane trees here. This is the, the basketball stadium uh, on campus, the Palestra. Uh, and one of the cool things was they kept those London plane trees in front of the Palestra up during this whole redesign here. This is a huge green infrastructure project. There's uh, rain gardens down here. There's a cistern under this lawn here, but they kept those trees up. And from this inventory, uh, which a student there, Corey Bassett did, she was able to show that those six London planes kept up through all this construction were able to provide about 14,000 tons of carbon sequestration, which was equivalent to the 1,300 smallest trees on campus. So as far as influence, influencing policy, she took this to the development board at Penn and showed them these numbers. And they said, you know, we really have to make an effort to do more tree protection, make sure we keep up large trees on campus because they're doing all this work. So even with a small project or a targeted project, you can get to really impactful results that can impact policy. Um, you know, so there's really cool things you can do with these small projects. You can look at just business districts. You can look at just neighborhoods. You can look at just blocks. Uh, you can say, where are we starting from? So if you're looking at a CGS neighborhood, you can do a couple blocks and say, this is where we're starting from. We want to get to uh, X number of trees or X percent cover, and you can study those with iTree Eco. So again, there's a lot of flexibility. These are all complete inventory projects. So you're measuring all the trees in your area of interest or just all the trees you're interested in. So uh, the example pictures here are just street trees uh, in a business district. Um, but you can go even wider here. So I just want to pull out one quick example. If you already have a street tree inventory or you already have a big inventory of trees on public lands where you work, you can get those into iTree Eco. You can import them in. And this is exactly what the city of Tempe did. Uh, they have a street tree inventory. They imported into iTree Eco. Uh, actually, it's a public tree inventory, so it's streets and parks, and they can estimate the ecosystem services. Uh, they even put together a really cool map. So they've got a great starting data set about where there are trees and the benefits they're providing. But these are only on public land. So what if we want to look at private land? Uh, we know that most of the time, only about 10 to 15 percent of our trees in a city are on public land, lots more on private land. So how do we get to those homeowners or those property owners uh, outside of public lands? And if you really look at this uh, Tempe tree map, this is their tree map on the left. Uh, this is that government, the White House CGES tool on the right. So these gray areas are the areas where this funding opportunity is trying to provide uh, money for more trees. We can look at those and we can see that, you know, those same neighborhoods, we don't have many public trees where we want to focus this. So we could do an iTree Eco project. Or we could look at maybe we want to do one of those plot based projects to get on all properties throughout our city uh, to really dig into this further. So, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities there. If you want to start to look at a citywide iTree Eco project, we have planning resources on our website. Um, I'm going to put these slides up with all the links live um, on the website as well. So you'll be able to find those and get to these links. But you can do things like how much is this going to cost? What's the budget going to be? Maybe you want to do contractors if you want to do a citywide plot based project. Um, you can talk to contractors about how much this would cost. Uh, in Tempe, they use uh, West Coast Arborist, contractors like Davey or Bartlett um, or Planet Geo. Those, all those folks do uh, iTree Eco Tree inventories as well. Um, so, really, with that expanding your view, you can import existing data. You can start to look at private property. Um, you can really make the case for larger projects. And you get that broader data set, like what Philadelphia had, to start doing really strategic management uh, across all lands. Um, and with that, I know we're almost out of time. Um, so just things to keep in mind with iTree Eco. Uh, there are fundable projects. There are ways to use iTree Eco as part of your uh, project that you're applying for funding for. Inventories can be part of that fundable project. Strategic management really feeds into a lot of those uh, fundable opportunities. Um, and you're really making the case for 
current and future funding as well. If you've got that broad scale data, there are all different ways to use it to support your strategic management uh, and the future ways you're gonna uh, apply iTree um, or the future ways you're gonna manage your forest strategically and how you wanna fund that. Um, so with that, if you wanna learn more, we have this funding page. You can get to it from the banner on itreetools.org. Um, we just finished an iTree Academy last week. So there's a whole bunch of resources there, including recordings that dive into each one of these tools in a little more detail. Uh, we have a video learning page. Uh, if you wanna see that eight minute walkthrough of how you import data into iTree Eco, that's there. Um, and we also have a support page with a whole bunch of other information. But do remember we have the office hours next week. So I know we've got just a couple minutes for questions here, um, but there will be two full hours next week if you wanna join us. Uh, for either one of those office hours. It's going to be first come, first serve, show up, and we are more than happy to answer questions and stay there as long as we need to. Um, and you can always reach us at info at itreetools.org. Um, and with that, I am done. Uh, Krista, I don't know if there's any questions, but I do just want to say thanks uh, for me and the rest of the team, uh, and also point out that the Forest Service did fund these uh, opportunities to get these presentations out to you. So uh, hopefully they're useful for uh, this funding opportunity as well. Uh, was there anything we wanted to touch on? No, Jason, I don't think so. Um, we pretty much addressed everything. We even had some good conversations about, you know, we know that there's a lot to think about if you're thinking about a broader eco project. So how is that directly related to your funding? And so that last bit that Jason was talking about, there are there's support information uh, and resources on our website. And Philip actually just posted um the link so for things like budgeting considerations and how do you start to manage even just thinking about this right so bring your questions to the office hours um we will send out a reminder to everyone who was in attendance so that you can link that up for monday and next wednesday um and we can help either send you in the right direction for how to couch this um, but also, again, to help you sort of use the tools that you need for now and to start thinking about the tools that you'll want for later. Um, so with that, yes, we are two minutes before the top of the hour. I think that we can go ahead and let everybody go. Again, we would thank we thank everybody for joining us today. Um, and we hope that, you know, you are able to uh, take advantage of the information that these tools can help you access. Um, and even if you're thinking about projects that are further down the road and other funding opportunities outside of this one, um, we're really excited that, you know, if you're here because you're looking to take advantage of this particular round of funding, this is what we do, and this is what you know. iTree is in many ways built for um, these and similar projects that are looking to, you know, access these benefits and enhance these benefits, um, you know, where they are needed the most. So, good luck um, for any, you know, this and any other future funding, um, you know, pursuits that you have, and. Always, always, we are open and available for questions through our website and again with the two office hours sessions next week. So thanks again for joining us. Everybody have a great weekend and hopefully we'll see you again soon.